Good mornings, my friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Whenever you are watching this, there is a war for your mind. Do you see it? Can you hear it? And do you feel it? So alternative viewpoints, alternative viewpoints, often called conspiracy theories, can be dangerous to the individual and are also extremely necessary. Aristotle says it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. So the term conspiracy theorist was coined in 1976 by the CIA in a report um, that discussed methods to discredit such theories and individuals. So there was a dispatch in 1975 in response to a New York Times article. It was, uh, and it was created by the CIA. It was titled Psych short for Psychological Operations, by the, the CS, which stood for the Clandestine Services Unit of the CIA. And in it, they state things like, the aim of this dispatch is to provide material countering and discrediting the claims of the conspiracy theorists. They go on to say, one part is to employ propaganda assets to refute the attacks of the critics, Book reviews and feature articles are particularly appropriate for this purpose. So hang on a second. They're saying book reviews and so they're so bash books that share ideas. And this was done in 75, guys. What's being done with the internet today? Bash are uh, books that are not looking at, uh, that are not spouting the narrative. And then also feature articles. So that means like feature articles such as Wall Street Journal, such as New York Times, such as big publications. Uh, are appropriate for this person. So that's silencing the conspiracy theorist. So freedom of thought, freedom of speech is a core function of maintaining individual freedom. Voltaire says, I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Our ability to speak is essential to maintaining individual and collective freedom. So if a person wanted to understand what narrative is being pushed and what narrative is being silenced, look who it is who is not supposed to be speaking. Look who is being told that they cannot speak. And if you really want to dial in on who is being suppressed, look who's being told they can't speak uh, for pub because of public safety reasons. If it's to keep the public safe, that is somebody absolutely worth listening to. Okay, so this was an, uh, nine points that summarized that dispatch. I pulled this from a Zero Hedge article. So these were the tactics that the CIA recommended in order to suppress or silence the conspiracy theorists. They says, they, uh, claim that it would be impossible that so many people would keep quiet about such a big conspiracy. Claim that it would be impossible that so many people would keep quiet. So think about this. How were they able to pull off the uh, atom bomb? There were massive amounts of people who were able, you know, who were quiet up until the time that that was released. So it is in, in fact possible. The second point, have people friendly to the CIA attack the claims and point back to the official reports. So we see that all the time today, guys. What are the accepted journals of science? The accepted medical journals? What are the accepted studies and the ones that are not? Even if there are studies out there that are valid, we see them being discredited because they're not put into certain publications. So now it's come to the point where there are focused, there are these, these pillars of truth that we have to get our information from. And if it doesn't come from that pillar of truth, automatically demonized, automatically. And where are we seeing that today with what we're facing uh, as a nation? Claim, okay, so the third point, claim that eyewitness testimony is unreliable. So people who visually see things, who, who witness those, doesn't matter how many eyewitness testimony is unreliable. So we can see that when we look at, um, I don't want to say the words because the videos get suppressed. So, uh, in, uh, put into your bloodstream, you know, the fluid that gets put into your bloodstream. Um, you know, so many people have filed lawsuits and gone up against that system. And yet when we, when people speak about that today, those people are discredited automatically as if like their suffering and their child's suffering has absolutely no weight. Uh, okay, fourth point, claim that it is all old news. There's no significant new evidence. There's no significant new evidence has emerged. So basically what they're saying is, ah, that's old. It doesn't matter anymore. Look at this shiny thing over here. Check this out. Okay. Uh, 
ignore conspiracy claims unless discussion about them is already too active. So we know that when we run into something that is that is um, being sorry guys, I got I got distracted. So we know that when we're running into something that's being suppressed or pushed away, like that it's already too active speaking about that. Okay, so I'm just gonna skip that one. Claim that it's irresponsible to speculate. So we can see that today. It's irresponsible to speculate. How dare you consider that narrative? How dare you consider that idea when uh, there are so many people out there that are being X, Y, Z? How dare you consider that's a threat to public safety? How dare you entertain that idea? Claim that it's, uh, okay, accused theorists of being wedded and infatuated to their ideas. So that's like if somebody is infatuated, they're saying, it's just because you support the red party or you support the blue party. That's the only reason why uh, you support that theory. Uh, okay, that's a politically motivated and, and wedded and infatuated. And then accused theorists of having financial interest in promoting their conspiracy theories. So you're just doing this to sell a book. You're just talking about it to sell a course. So the term conspiracy theory has come to, to define a thought, a string of beliefs, or alternative theories that the accepted narrative uh, has come to define thought, string of alternative that challenges, I'm sorry, that challenges the accepted narrative pushed from the authority figure, such as the government entities or large media outlets, which are governed largely in part by the CIA. So the CIA's involvement in media and journalism was clearly laid out in Operation Mockingbird that goes back as far as uh, World War II. And that has just grown and developed since then till now. So it's only become stronger as time has passed. So when the masses are controlled by groupthink, authority, obedience, and that narrative is fed directly to the masses or, or a belief system, it's essential that free thinkers stand up and challenge that. Um, you know, like we talked about in, in previous videos, we talked about, uh, like in the video, Will You Obey? We talked about the power of obedience and these psychological studies that have been done that show that, you know, like really when it comes down to it, the human animal, the human species, individually, insanity is where, but collectively, as a herd, insanity is the norm. Like that's just the way that we operate. And so we are very easily steered towards an end goal, especially when you look at the power structures of the media today and how it's centrally controlled. Like, I don't know if you've seen those videos where it shows uh, like the, the local news reports and it shows it from all kinds of different areas all around the United States. And you could have a hundred of those different small news stations reporting and they all same exact, say exactly the same thing. Like, that's like the Borg, guys. That's like this collective voice that's out there, like repeating it. You will obey. You will listen to what we say. Anything that is alternative or counter to the accepted narrative, that's a conspiracy theorist. And don't listen. So Mona Card, which she was played a very important role in the 19th century in giving women power and helping them stand up and take their power. She says, we are not governed by armies and police, but by ideas. And so when somebody claims that's a conspiracy theory or they turn away from some kind, some belief or, or, or truth because it's counter to what they accept, that's why it's so important. Like we go back to the uh, opening quote, Aristotle, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Like, are there conspiracy theories out there that are absolutely bonkers and nuts? Heck yeah. But it's important to be able to look at those openly. If we shut the door on everything that's alternative theory and, and we're not willing to entertain the thought just because it's something different, our minds are closed and we'll never be able to see truth outside of what is given to us, fed to us. It's like if we open our mouth and put a funnel in there and just say, feed me, and that's all we take. And unfortunately, there's so many in the population today that have fallen into that trap. And so you as a free thinker, as somebody who sees through that illusion, it's so important that today we stand up because the truth is guys, we are at war. We are at an information war right now. It's a war for our minds and that's what is happening. So the system, you know, if, when we look back across history, every major freedom, 
that has been won by the people was not handed to us by the political system. It was won and hard fought by the people involved. And that means that people who are willing to chan challenge the status quo, challenge the system, they were willing to stand up in the face of heavy opposition and ridicule because at the time that they were doing that, they were not accepted, guys, on a mass scale. They were not, it, you know, like you go back and you look at the people who stood up strong to those kinds of things. It wasn't until the very late stages when the freedom had already been won or after their death when they became a martyr for the movement that they were actually accepted. Yet those freedoms that were given to us were absolutely essential for where we are today. Absolutely. And the last thing that I want to say is that today with what's happening, they want the, 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 the individuals that are fighting collectively to suppress the freedom of humanity. They want you to feel alone. They want individuals. They want free thinkers. They want those who have the ability to question what's been fed to us. They want us to feel alone. Social media is not a reflection of what the world is like. There are many more out there just like you, just as pissed off, just as frustrated, that want freedom for humanity and are tired of being suppressed by a tyrannical system that's governing our world. And guys, we are going in a direction that could end very badly for us if we don't wake up and if we don't stand up believe in. Now is essential. Now is essential to be vocal, to share your beliefs, be willing to be wrong, be willing to look like a fool. It's only the people who are willing to fail that are willing to try new things. So you are not alone, guys. If you appreciate this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Share if you feel it is worthwhile. Subscribe if you are not already. This is Mentor Mornings here to help you own your day and fuel your journey, guys. Rise unconquered, and I will see you tomorrow.